Good morning. My name is Jason Catone, and I would like to welcome everyone this morning, whether you are here in person or are watching it, our live stream worship from home. We especially welcome our guest today, Reverend Judith Brackett, who will also be starting here full time in January as our acting pastor. At this time, I invite you to stand, say hello, and wave to those around you. If you are watching us at home, please drop us a comment, give us a like, and let us know you are worshiping with us. Since we are scrolling the announcements before the service and during the postlude, I would like to just highlight a couple of items. Our adult education class will be meeting in person in Fellowship Hall at 1045 AM after the worship service. We are studying Paul's letters to the Philippians. The class is also on Zoom. The link will be on the church's website under events. This means you will have the option of staying at home and participating on Zoom, or you can come to the Fellowship Hall to participate in person. Join us. Tonight at 7 p.m. is our annual Advent hymn, sing, and concert. This year, it will be held in person and online. Please come to join us. Next Saturday at 7 p.m., we will have a fun Christmas trivia fellowship event in person, in Fellowship Hall, and on Zoom. Check on the events page of the church website for details. So please, 2021 Room at the Inn is in full swing. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the program, we are asking for volunteers from our congregation to support families in need from Interfaith Housing Alliance in Ambler. There are currently two families in the program, and Supli, along with Sanctuary United Methodist and Ambler Mennonite, will be providing meals and check-ins throughout the month of December. There is an immediate need for meals and a check-in tonight, Sunday, December 5th. Please use the sign-up link that was recently sent out through email, as well as provided in the supplement. There are many opportunities to get involved here at Supli. Please see the church email blasts and website for lots more information on happenings here at Supli. Hear these words from the prophetic book of Isaiah in chapter 40. A voice of one calling, in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, in the rugged places a plain. Come, let us worship the Lord together. This Advent season, as we make sure our waiting is an act of waiting, we will remember an influential Christian leader from the past. Thomas Merton wrote, the monk does not come to the monastery to get something which the ordinary Christian cannot have. On the contrary, he comes there in order to realize and to appreciate all that any good Christian already has. He comes to live his Christian life and thus to appreciate to the full his heritage as a son of God. He comes in order that he might see and understand that he already possesses everything. Today, as we light the peace candle, we find peace in having the heritage from God. Mm -hmm. 
Using the prayer of invocation that's in your bulletin, let us all pray together, saying, Lord of hope, as night workers long for the sunrise, we long for the coming of Christ. In our worship today, we yearn for your spirit to give us a glimpse of your glory that one day we will see in full when all will be made new. Through Christ our Lord, our light, amen. It's actually not happening today, so please stand and let's praise the Lord through song.
At this time, I invite you to please stand as the ushers bring forward today's tithes and offerings. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, all we give and all we are is a precious gift from you. Please accept this token of our gratitude that this will be used for your purposes with and for the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. At this time, I would like any children who are in the pews to meet me up at the communion table. And I realize that we haven't met, so if you would feel better bringing one of your adults with you, bring your adult with you too. I'm going to ask that brothers and sisters, siblings stay together. Come on up here. Anyone else? We'll sort of stay in family puddles. It's our way of social distancing. Oh my heavens. Tell me your name. I'm Pastor Judith. I'm Hannah. Hannah. Matthew. Hannah and Matthew. And your brother and sister because you're standing next together. I like your Minecraft mask. And then tell me your name. I'm Pastor Judith. Ellie. Ellie? Ella. Ella. And Ella, you're here by yourself, yes? Great, welcome. Oh, I know your daddy, I think. Yeah. Well, those two. Hi, Elder Brian. Introduce me to your two. Amelia and Clyde. Very nice. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Mackenzie. Good morning, Mackenzie. You know, I think it's important that I ask your names. And the reason I do that is I want you. Oh, oh my heavens, we have more, excuse me. Tell me your names. Jessica. Jessica, Jessica do you know this person next to you? AJ. AJ, right? Good morning, welcome. Do you know that the God that we worship, that we praise and worship, knows your name and knew you before you were born? So I think it's really important that we learn each other's names. I'm going to need help remembering, and I can remind you if you forget my name. My name is Pastor Judith. Um, I just wanted to show you um, that the communion table is set because we'll be celebrating communion later during worship. And as a matter of fact, this is sort of, I want to tell you a little bit about what's going to happen. And then you're going to go and have an activity, but you're coming back early so that you'll be here for communion, so that you can see it then. And when, it's, when you come back, you're going to come right back to the steps, okay? You're not going to have to sit with your parents. You're going to come back here. And I want to tell you one thing that you'll see. It's hiding under here. There's a loaf of bread, okay? And I'm not going to do it now, but I'll do it when you come back. And this is what will happen. I will say some certain words that we say when we have communion. And I will take the bread, and I will bless the bread by holding it up. And then I'll break the bread, and then I'll do this. And I do that because Jesus did that. We hear that in the Bible, that that's what Jesus did with a loaf of bread. He took it, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it. 
And so I want you to do the motions with me. We're going to practice it. And so when I really do that with the bread later, you're going to do the actions with me. You ready? It's take it, blessed, broken, and given. It. It's four things. We're going to keep doing it. We're going to do it over and over. Okay? Taken, blessed, broken, given. It's okay if you just want to watch. That's okay, Mackenzie. Taken, blessed, broken. Given. You can say it with me. Taken, blessed, broken, given. Now, uh, there's was one part I want to, to pr have you practice. When you do the given part, this is amazing. This bread is given for us, but this bread is also remembering all people all over the world in all of history. So when we do the given part, it's not this. It's this. It's this. It is an extravagant thing. So ready? We're going to add that part. You ready? Taken, blessed, broken, given. Taken, blessed, broken, given. X. Oh, did you, oh, did you see those arms? All right. Thank you so much. I loved meeting you. It's a lot of you. And you're going to go off and have your activity. And I'll see you later. I'll call you up to the steps, and we'll do that together. All right? All right. Oh, you know what? I almost forgot. I want to bless you before you go. I want to bless you before you go. So pretend I'm putting my hand on each of your cheeks. And so I keep my hand like this. Yeah, you can do that. That's God's hand blessing your cheek. Holy Lord, bless these children as they depart from the sanctuary and learn more of your word. We invite, we're grateful to their caregivers who brought them to worship today so that they learn to praise and honor you. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today is from Malachi 3, verses 1 through 4, and can be found on page 1001 of your pew Bible. See, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly, the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant, whom you desire, will come, says the Lord Almighty. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. Then the Lord will have men who will bring offerings in righteousness. And the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be acceptable to the Lord, as in days gone by, as in former years.
Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to um, take a moment of personal privilege before I read from the gospel and bring the word this morning. Um, it's an unusual Sunday. I've been in a lot of pulpits around the Presbyterian and the Donegal Presbytery, but I've never been in one when I was about to start full time. So um, it's an unusual morning, um, but I'm happy to be here. Um, I think this is interesting when you arrive at a church and you just, what you notice and what you take in. And for you, it might be, this is where you worship and so this is what you're used to. Um, but sometimes a stranger notices things that are sort of uh, unusual or interesting. So as I said, I've been in a lot of pulpits and um, I don't know how often you stand up here, but you probably wouldn't be surprised to learn that there's a couple of Bibles couple of hymnals. Typically, um, you're, I can already tell you're kind and generous and thoughtful because there's not one bottle of water but two um, in case the pastor has a coughing fit or needs it ahead of time. Um, there's also things that I don't, you don't see in every pulpit, but I'm not the least bit surprised. A few candles, some matches, but there is one thing that caught my attention and I'm wondering what this says about you. It's this Lego. Technically, it's a Duplo. I, I know these. I'm conversant in this language. This is an oversized. This is the Lego for the uh, preschool age. But I, um, I'm going to take this as an indication that you are also joyful and playful. I think this is a good omen of our time together during this interim season. So I kind of like it. I've never seen one in the pulpit. Thank you. Now. Let us worship. Hear these words now from the Gospel of John. May the Spirit speak to us through these words. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed. He didn't deny it. He confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, nope. And then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the one, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please pray with me? Holy Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer, we pray. Amen. So today's scripture from the Gospel of John, it takes place during an in-between time. It's that time after the Old Testament prophets have given voice about a coming Messiah, and it's before the incarnation, the birth of Jesus, Advent time. And the Gospel tells us that this man named John has been busy ministering to the people, 
telling t folks to turn away from sin and toward the light. And John poetically quotes the prophet Isaiah, telling everyone to make straight the way of the Lord, which is another way of saying, fix what needs fixing, get ready, make room. John's voice crying out in the wilderness has created a buzz. He's not in Jerusalem where these activities take place. He's someplace else. His ministry of baptism has caught the attention of the people. And it's also caused some suspicion from the religious authorities back in Jerusalem. So they make their way to the wilderness and say, who are you? What do you think you're doing? And it seems it's kind of complicated getting a straight answer out of John. He defines himself more by who he is not than by who he is. I'm not the Messiah. I am not Elijah. I am not a prophet. John, you see, is letting the religious worry warts know that all this attention on him is misplaced. John's ministry is not about John. John is pointing to the one who is to come. Now John doesn't try to prove anything to his questioners. Witnesses don't offer proof. Witnesses offer testimony. A witness. Think with me about the role of a witness. In our judicial system, we have judges or a jury who decide a case. But the witness has a very particular role. The witness testifies to the truth as they see it, as they understand it. They don't know the whole story, but what they do know, what they offer, makes a world of difference. John's witness is important because the truth to which John gives witness is Jesus. So like John, we too have a responsibility and an opportunity to give our witness. We are to point to Christ. We're not expected to convince anybody of anything. We're not expected to kind of get kind of haughty and upset and insist. And we're not expected to exclude anyone who disagrees with us. We are expected to point. We are expected to point to the truth of Christ that we sense and that we experience. Pointing to Jesus is another way of saying that we want to, we must lift up holy moments. The holy that's embedded in the ordinary, we name it and we lift it up. You name the love that is present in the room. You kind of call them as you see them all for the sake of Christ. This can be tricky business. It's difficult to point to the light of the world when our backs are turned away from the light. And often, frankly, love feels hidden and it's difficult to see it. Other times, we are so hip deep in our own stuff that we miss noticing anything remotely holy. Praise God for the companions among us who point out the people and the places where they see the truth of Christ. We take turns pointing our fingers to the truth and sometimes we follow the pointed finger of another. Noticing and pointing out the Spirit of God among us, it can feel like a holy game of I spy. Did you play that as a child? I spy with my little eye that God is at work right 
there. I see someone that God loves. I see someone that God has healed. I see a place that God cares about. Right now, I see it. Can you spy it too? Certainly, a reason that we gather on Sunday morning is to praise and worship. Yes, that's why we're here. But another reason that we gather is to follow the finger of where the gathered church is pointing. Together in worship, we are reoriented to see the truth of the one who is and was and will be forever. I want to share a story with you. My friend Kristen, her elderly father, died just a few days before Thanksgiving. And about a day before his sudden illness, Kristen's father did what was typical of him um, with Thanksgiving just a few days away. Using a cherished recipe, he made a large batch of Italian wedding soup. The soup had become this family favorite, and they couldn't, they couldn't have a Thanksgiving without it. However, this year, Kristen's father made the soup as usual, but then suddenly fell ill and passed away right before Thanksgiving. And so when Kristen's grieving family gathered to share their holiday meal, their hearts were broken and simultaneously blessed. Blessed because on the table was their patriarch's homemade Italian wedding soup. Gathered at the table, sharing a soup, a father's love was present with his family in a most unique way. Could it be? That this is just a lovely story of how a pot of homemade soup can ease a few moments of a family's grief? Or could this story bear witness? Was a father's absence from the family gathering? Was it mitigated just a smidgen by the light of love that shines in the darkness of a grieving heart? Could something so simple as a pot of soup point to a divine truth beyond our knowing and bear witness to the one who knows us better than we know ourselves? And could it be that the God who created the heavens hung the stars in the sky, and set the planets in their orbit really have anything to do with a pot of Italian wedding soup. Can we know for certain? Certainty is the domain of the judge or the jury. We are only witnesses. Yet, yet as witnesses, we do know this. We can hear the joy in that story. There is a joy that's too coincidental, too beautiful, too perfect to just brush it off. That soup served a holy purpose beyond being one more item on the holiday menu. The older I get, the more I have come to believe that when people say, ah, that happened, that was a coincidence. It's not really a coincidence. It's God at work, moving in the world. Sometimes I've heard it called a God wink. Have you heard that? God winks happen more than we realize. And if we look for them, they happen with greater frequency than our awareness has the capacity to take in. Sisters and brothers in Christ, we need each other to notice and to point. 
Because if you're not paying attention, you could miss the truth that accompanies us all of our days. So tell of the love that catches your attention. Live in the ways that bear witness to the love that created you for this very purpose. And the more you do it, the more practiced you'll become. You'll even emanate from within the light of Christ that is inside of you. So this Advent, in the midst of all that is, bidden and unbidden, let us point fingers. Let us point to the living Christ among us. Let us witness to the one who is here among us now, even as we wait in the wilderness for him to come again. We worship while we wait, and we light our way to the manger, one candle at a time. May it be so. Blessed Advent. Amen. Our Advent pastoral prayer. Um, before I, we pray a sustained prayer together, let me lift these two prayers that came my way this morning. Um, I see prayer and praise for the Anderson family. Christy went into labor this morning, and we are praying for an easy delivery. And this will be John and Phyllis's number six grandchild and first grandson. Ah, they're pretty sure about that. Um, praise the Lord. Good news. And there's also um, a request for Bob. And the reason for this request for Bob is his continued recovery and also for us to know that he's um, scheduled to return to his home this coming Friday. Sounds like good news for Bob. Praise the Lord. Um, are there other prayer requests that you have on your heart this morning, a joy or a concern? I understand you don't usually do this, but it's OK to start. Anybody? And I'm going to pray for your silence and trust that you have something on your heart, a joy, a concern. And um, sometimes it's even that the prayer, it's too personal to share. But we're going to trust that God knows what you carry on your heart this morning. So let us pray together. God of Advent, who yearns for our peace and our patience, help us to be witnesses to your ever-present love. Embolden us to point to you that we may become a light for others. Open our eyes that we have closed in fear and worry, that we may see you in the anxieties and the uncertainties that beset our days and threaten to overwhelm us. May the angel Gabriel's words to Mary be overheard by us. Fear not, the Lord is with you. Hear our cries for the many people in the world who are in need. News of violence and terrorism are at odds with your insistence that peace and love reign supreme. Forgive us that we sometimes forget that in Christ, the world has already been saved. Beyond the glitter and the goodwill of the Advent season, help us to have hope in the present moment. Confident of your promises, hear our prayers for all who are discouraged, unemployed, struggling with illness, and dismayed by the concerns of everyday life. Comfort, oh, comfort your people in ways that allow them 
to experience your goodness and mercy. God of hope, you come from a distance beyond our reach or understanding, yet are closer to us than we are to ourselves. Remain with us in our own days of expectation that we may give birth to what is true, just, and beautiful. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let us now rise in body or spirit and profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed that is written in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. Third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I think I'm going to pause for a second for our friends to come back. For those of you watching at home, there is a plexiglass screen in front of me. Cause I acknowledge I'm not wearing a mask as I preside at the table. At this, while we're waiting, if, is there anyone who needs the wafer and the juice? If you would raise your hand, we'll have an usher bring you one. Does everyone have one? Yay, welcome. Come on up. Come on up and again, stay in your family puddles so you're standing next to your sibling. And you can come to this side too. Ready? I'm going to do some, I'm going to pray, I'm going to talk a little. When I watch, when I get to the bread part, you're doing this. All right. Christ's coming was a disruption in the world, but a most holy disruption. This table does not belong to this church. This is Christ's table. And it is here that we meet the living Christ in the bread and in the cup. And when we come and eat at this table and meet the risen Christ here, we show our willingness to come closer, which is an act of vulnerability, to share in the meal that God provides for us, and to renew our hope in the future that God has prepared for us. This Advent season, Christ comes. Christ invites us into his story. Christ comes and Christ calls us for our souls to be magnified. And Christ comes by enabling us to leap with joy because he has reconciled the world to himself. Let us pray. Holy Lord, we thank you and praise you, God of unending love. For you offer us refuge in all times and in all places. Your word descends from heaven for our wholeness to diminish the powers of sin that trample upon us and lead us forth into the fullness of your faithful love. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ our Lord, who by his life, death, and resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Pour out your spirit upon this bread and this cup so that this meal might awaken our hearts once more and help us shine 
with the rising light of your kingdom. Amen. On the night before he was arrested, Jesus was at the table with his closest friends, his disciples. And when Jesus was at the table, Jesus took the bread, and Jesus blessed the bread, and Jesus broke the bread and gave it to his disciples. And he said, whenever you eat this bread, I want you to remember me. And in the same way at that dinner, Jesus took the cup and he poured out into the cup and he said, this cup represents my blood that I shed for you. And every time you eat this bread and drink the juice, remember me until I come again. Friends, these are just ordinary, it's ordinary grain that's fashioned into bread. And it's the fruit of the vine that's squished and made into juice. But these ordinary, everyday things become extraordinary when, they're, when they come from Christ's table. So let us all take the bread. You have the wafer in your cup. And we'll, we'll eat this together. The body of Christ broken for you. And in the same way, we take the cup and we drink from the cup. This is the cup of salvation poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Now let us pray a closing prayer and then the Lord's Prayer together. God of disruptive grace, Ignite our joy amid the troubles and brokenness of our lives. Awaken us to the truth that you are. And join us with all of your faithful ones who have come before us and will come in the future, so that we might confess you in all that we do and sing praise to you in all circumstances. Be exalted, O God Most High, in the glorious name of Jesus Christ, in whom we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. This day, daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we you know, give our trespass to temptation. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much for being up at the table with me. Our final hymn is Hark the Herald Angels Sing, page 31. And you can go back with your mom and dad.
It might be my favorite part of worship when the doors at the back are opened by the ushers because we are the church gathered and we are also the church sent. So go, take your praise and your edification and go out into the world. Go out into this world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to all that is good. Maybe even point at it as you go. Return to no one evil for evil. Support the faint-hearted. Strengthen the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all persons, no exceptions. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.